But I can't eat fruit. I can't have fruit. Fruit is full of fructose, and fructose is sugar, and sugar is a demon coming up from the gates of hell, ready to suck away my gains and make me a big fat guy. Everybody wants to know what they should be eating when it comes to getting big and getting ripped and getting jacked. But what people really want to know deep down in their heads is, is there any nice foods I can eat? You know, there's the this idea, reputation may not be the right word, but, you know, it's kind of drilled into your head that you just got to eat green and white, right? Green and white is all you can have. So it's chicken, rice and broccoli and things like that over and over again and there is some truth to that but you can be a bit more experimental you can actually bring in some foods that you may actually enjoy and therefore you're going to enjoy your diet more and if you enjoy your diet more you're less likely uh, to cheat on it so I sat down I looked at the stuff that I was eating and tried to consider foods that I would yeah the people, the people think are unhealthy basically and unhealthy in inverted commas well actually not unhealthy at all but some stigma seems to have been attached to them. So we're going to get into it. Before we do, please do smash that subscribe button. I appreciate it. Please do like the video. been reading so much about YouTube recently, and people don't like videos. YouTube gets mad. It's crazy. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Simon Miller, YouTube idiot. Uh, essentially, look, I've been lifting weights for 20 years. I enjoy talking about fitness, so I thought I'd start making fitness videos. You are welcome to take my advice and think, oh, this helps. You are welcome to take my advice and go, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. It's completely up to you, but these are eight unhealthy foods that are actually good. The muscle gain. Number eight is popcorn. Now, we have to put a big asterisk by this. I'm not talking about popcorn you buy in the cinema. I'm not talking about you buying some popcorn in a bag and eating it. I'm talking when you buy popcorn kernels and you put them in an air popper and then you eat the popcorn. That's what I'm talking about. So dry, if you want to call it that, completely dry popcorn. So now you can maybe go, oh, that's not the same kind of popcorn. But popcorn is really nice. Like not only is it really, really high in fiber, but it's a whole grain and whole grain is good for you. Also been linked to things like reduction of heart disease and matters like that. And look, you can, there's ways and means to do it. Like if you put a little bit of salt on it, a little bit of sodium, is that going to kill you? No, as long as you're not eating crazy amounts of salt throughout the day. And you can buy calorie free syrups. There's loads of them, just Google them. And you can put that on top. You can kind of sprinkle it around and it actually tastes pretty good plus it will fill you up also you can have an absolute ton of it i mean genuinely you go and pop 80 grams of popcorn which is about 300 calories but if you go do that you will have a massive bowl of popcorn and you know if you get inside your head it'll feel like you're at the cinema having a treat it's, it's i think the problem when it comes to popcorn is that people assume that they can put butter on it or they can have uh, sweet popcorn which obviously full of sugar salt popcorn is better but the problem with any popcorn you're going to buy from a store is that it would have been cooked in usually rapeseed oil and that's going to increase the fat content and that's what you want to stay away from but you can genuinely buy an air popper for around about 15 quid from if you're over here in uk i'll go do one and yeah you can buy popcorn kernels from any local supermarket and you can pop your own popcorn and it tastes really good it does and like i say it is good for you it's a good source of carbohydrates meant to the fiber the whole grain all of these things may put a smile on your face. Number seven is fruit. And the reason I bring fruit into this is because I was this person. Years ago, I was this person. I was like, I can't eat fruit. I can't have fruit. Fruit is full of fructose and fructose is sugar. And sugar is a demon coming up from the gates of hell, ready to suck away my gains and make me a big fat guy. You'll be unsurprised to hear that's not true. You got to make sure you eat fruit. And if you do eat fruit, fruit tastes really good for all the reasons I just said. Plus it's nutritious and it's healthy for you. And you know, it's going to keep you healthy, which which is the main point, right? You, I, I always say this, when it comes to fitness and lifting weights, it's all well and good how much you're enjoying the gym and how much you're enjoying lifting, how much you're enjoying your diet, but if it's not benefiting your general health, then what is the point? You want to absolutely be healthy, and that's what fruit will do. And this thing about think about how much there is to choose from. Of course, some fruits are going to be better than others, but as long as you treat them in moderation, you can have what a banana, an apple, a strawberry, a blueberry, a blackberry. Star fruit is good. Uh, there's, I'm not going to sit here and list fruits. That would be ridiculous. But you are allowed to have fruit, like you are, and you should be having fruit. There's a reason why you know medical boards and professionals say, oh, have five a day, five a day when it comes to fruit and vegetables, because they know how well your body responds. To and if your body responds well to something and then you're going to put it under rigorous exercise as you do in the gym, you're only going to benefit. I eat blueberries like they are going out of fashion. I love blueberries and there are, you know, fruit that will be lesser in calories than blueberries, but I just make sure I balance out my diet and my calorie plan elsewhere. But I love blueberries. I get excited about blueberries. Think how cool that is. You go to have a meal, you think, yes, Mother Hubbard, I'm about to smash some blueberries in my face and it's going to be a party up here in my mouth. But you don't have to do that. You may not like blueberries, but blueberries are a good answer antioxidant but yes i totally used to think i used to tell people what a jackass i was I, I would hate old me but i'd be like you can't have fruit if you want to lift weights absolute gibberish absolute nonsense you can and you should 
no matter what your diet is, even if you're trying to get ripped, just eat less fruit. But that comes down to calories anyway. Your body needs that stuff. It's going to help you live a long and healthier life. So make sure you're eating some fruit. Number six is protein powder. I don't even know why I brought this one in, but I keep getting it all the time in my comments. I'm happy to address this. People say, Simon, is protein powder healthy for you? I'm like, yes. It is. I mean, it comes, we've got another one in kind of this ilk that we'll talk about later, but you've just got to make sure you're smart and look at the nutritional content and see what's actually in there. Because some companies will sneak a lot of carbohydrates and sugar in there, and you don't want to be taking that if you are taking your protein supplement to supplement your protein. Another thing to remember too, the word supplement, so you're not just meant to be drinking protein powder, it's meant to supplement the actual food you're eating. But yeah, protein powder, we live in an amazing world. I used to look back in the day when I first started training, the only protein powder you could get tasted like sand and it was disgusting. You had to hold your nose and down it. Now you can get tremendous protein powders that not only taste good, but are essentially just 100, well near enough, 100% protein. And you don't even have to stick for whey. You can do whey, you can do beef, you can do egg, you can do vegan, you can do brown rice, you can do pea. I mean, there's loads. You can do soy. There's absolutely loads that you can do. And yeah, you know, if you, for example, like if you don't, some people still don't like having protein powder with water, which is fine. Buy some almond, buy some unsweetened almond milk. It's like 13 calories per 100 milliliters. It's good for you because of it's almond milk. It's basically water anyway, but it'll just add a certain thickness and an add a certain sweetness to your protein powder. So you can absolutely use protein powder as a treat. I think all the crazy flavors you've got, like chocolate, cookies and cream. I think everything but chocolate tastes disgusting, but banana, strawberry, lemon, cheesecake. There's a banoffee coffee. There's anything you could possibly want. So also don't buy into this whole idea that cheap protein is really bad for you. Like read some reviews first and make sure people are enjoying it. But even if you are, you know, you can't afford a super duper expensive one. Like you don't have to get an ISO, an isolate protein or anything like that. Yes, you'll get a, a tiny percentage of difference, but it's not essential. So if you can find a good one in terms of nutrition, it's cheap and that benefits your current financial situation, then there is no reason not to have protein powder. It's absolutely fine for you. And if you can use it a treat in your head, depending what you mix with it. You can mix berries with it, right? You can mix your fruit, get a blender, and you've got a lovely protein shake. Number five is ice cream. That's a lie. It's a little joke I threw in here. You can't eat ice cream. I mean, there are better ice creams out there now. Like, was it Halo Top? And there's another one out there too. Other ice creams are available. And they are lower calorie versions. I can't remember what they do with them. I think a lot of them do actually use whey protein. But I wouldn't say they were good for you. But yeah, I just wanted to throw it in there. Because I know that one person on the internet being a reactionary platform will be like, ice cream, you can't throw ice cream. No, you can't. Ice cream's not good for you. It's delicious. And you should definitely factor it in here and there to make you happy. Because that's what ice cream will do but it ain't going to help you build muscle. Number four is Greek yogurt. Now, there are there different variations of this. The ones you'll usually see in the supermarket are 0% fat and 5% fat. And I'm not even going to insult you by explaining the differences between those two things. But again, mostly for people getting in touch, they seem to think, well, focus on the 0% one because that's the one that I take and I would advise other people to take. They seem to think because... I think per 100 grams, it's got like 5 grams of carbohydrates, all that sugar, but it also has like 10 grams of protein. But people look at it and go, well, this has 5 grams of sugary carbohydrates, therefore surely it's just as bad as yogurt. And I'm like, dude, go and find me any other yogurt that has 10 grams of protein and 100 grams. You ain't going to find it. This is why Greek yogurt is so good for you. And going back to what we talked about a second ago, you know, if you want to take protein powder and mix it up in Greek yogurt, I tell you, man, that's some good eating. Get some of that calorie-free syrup, mix it up, and you've got like a mini cheat meal there, but actually it's pretty damn healthy for you. So don't run away from stuff like Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is 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 fantastic. I don't, I don't I can't even understand where the problem would begin. Of course, when it comes to a whole calorie and carbohydrate thing, sure you need to make sure you're working into your daily allowance, but you should be doing that with all foods. We've said this before, and that one guy in the comments gets mad every time. But you can get big and live off pizzas, should you so wish. The problem is they're so calorific. Well, I'm going off track, but basically, if you eat a 2,500 calorie pizza, but you burn 2,600 calories in a day, you're still going to lose weight because you burnt more calories than you took in. It's just, of course, the problem with the pizza is you can have a pizza slice, which is tiny. And that's probably going to have, what, like 400, 500 calories in it. Or you can have a bunch of popcorn that, again, we mentioned, and that's going to see you through for maybe 20, 30 minutes. Greek yogurt does not deserve to be in the unhealthy category whatsoever. And there seems to be, it's not a massive fad, but it seems to be this fad where all of a sudden people are like pointing fingers at Greek yogurt like it's bad. It's not. It's great. It's really, really good. Some people don't like the taste. It can be a bit better. I personally love it. I think it's delicious. Delicious. I think it's lovely. I look forward to eating that every day as well. But yes, if you like the kind of dairy side of things, the yogurty side of things, 
but you don't want to have a Rolo yogurt for obvious reasons, although thumbs up for Rolo yogurts. They're great. Trust me, invest in Greek yogurt. It, the taste thing's different, but if you like it, yes, have it in your plan. Number three is guacamole. And the reason I throw guacamole in there is based on a comment I got when some guy said, oh, I, I'll eat avocado, but I won't eat guacamole. And I was like, I, I don't want to be that guy. But guacamole is just smashed up avocado, my friend. If you go out and have it in a restaurant, they may add some oil or something to that. But in my local supermarket, you can just buy guacamole. And it is literally just a smashed up avocado. But obviously, if you can't be bothered to do that, they've done it for you. That's the price you're paying. You're paying a premium for that. And it's really cool. You can dip stuff in it. You can have it with meals. It kind of acts like a sauce. Not really, but kind of. So yeah, don't be worried about that. It's, it's, it's good for you. It's good healthy fats. It will help lower your cholesterol. If you want to add more fats in your diet, avocado, great way to do it because they're actually quite low in calories given how much you can get. But yeah, there seems to be a bad rap about the guacamole, but not a bad rap about the avocado. Both should be getting two thumbs up. Doesn't mean you can go out and have nachos because obviously the nacho ain't great for you. But as a dip, if you want to kind of add some flavor into your meals, guacamole rocks. Number two is protein bars. It's the same as protein powder from earlier. You just have to look at the bar. There are absolutely some protein bars out there that are atrocious for you. And they are packed full of sugars. I won't name one. I was out in America recently and I used to have them all the time. You probably know the one I'm talking about. They're massive and they taste delicious. But they are more sugar than they are protein bars. And there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of carbohydrates and fats in your protein bar. But obviously if you're eating it for the protein benefit, you just have to do this. Just turn it over and look at the label. That's that. Make sure you're happy with it. Make sure the calories aren't too dense. You know, macros aren't the most important thing in the world, but make sure, you know, you're happy with those too. And you could have a protein bar. It's not like eating a Mars bar. I mean, you can buy Mars protein bars or Snickers protein bars. Don't do that. That's just a Mars bar that's had some whey thrown in there. It's, it's, it's not good for you at all. But yeah, just, this is, I think it's this, because they become more popular, and over here, especially in the UK, you can just buy a protein bar in a garage these days in a service station, which is crazy to me, because before you had to go to Timbuktu to get them. But they, it's not the same as having a Snickers or a Mars or a Kit Kat or a Yorkie or anything like that. And again, there seems to be some people who equate the same thing. Not at all. If you're out and about and you feel like you need to eat and you don't want to... Yeah, you, you don't want to get an unhealthy snack. Of course you can chow down on a protein bar. Even if you go something like with a grenade bar that may be slightly too calorific, it's still pretty good for you. And you're still going to get a decent amount of protein in there. So... Don't beat yourself up too much in your own head with this stuff. You are allowed to have a little bit of leeway. You are allowed to have a little bit of fun. Unless you're about to step on a, a bodybuilding stage in six weeks, it's okay. No one's going to die. Number one is bread. Bread is okay. Like, this is, there's, a, there's a, a crime wave against bread at the moment. The bread is the worst thing in the world. And if you eat bread, you're going to get fat. Bread is just a dense, calorific carbohydrate. That's it. That's it. And obviously, if you're eating white bread, it's high on the on the GI scale and all this. I'm not going to get into that right now. But sourdough bread is much better for you. You can stick to wholemeal bread. But you just have to be smart with your bread like you would do with anything else. If you want to get up and have eggs on toast, just don't have like eight pieces of bread. Have a couple. And again, make sure you look at what else you're eating in that day and adjust the soup. There's also high protein breads that you can get that I personally think taste nicer than normal bread. Was it P28 bread? I think it's called. I didn't get that one because you can't get it in the UK. I get a variation of it, but I can't remember what the hell it's called now. But there's, there's some wraps that you can get that are lovely. You get one of them and wrap some chicken in it, get some salad in there. Oh, man, I tell you, that is good eating. But Everybody runs away from bread these days. And yes, if you're eating a ton of it all the time, it's going to catch up to you because it's going to push your calories through the roof. But there is nothing wrong with eating bread. If you really, really like bread, there's different kinds of bread as well. Like Ezekiel bread, it's a little bit overrated, but if, you know, you can go with it if you want, if it makes you feel better. <coughs> And there's something called Vogel bread. Vogel bread tastes super nice. Again, it's just the, the way that it's been made makes it a little bit healthier for you. But if you want to stick to normal ass bread, it's going to be okay. You're not always going to balloon up and get fat. I mean, you may do depending on your personal stats. Like if I have pasta, if I eat white pasta, it doesn't matter how much I eat, I just, it just sticks in my stomach and, oh, my body just responds really bad to it. But that's, you know, that's personalized to me. But on a general rule of thumb, you are allowed to, to eat bread. Again, just be smart with it and 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 take your time. Don't go out now and reintroduce all your and change all your carbs with bread. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying again, if you're out and about and you want to have a chicken wrap, chicken wrap ain't gonna kill you. Bread isn't the 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 devil <laughs> that it's made out to be. So remember that. And that's that. That's eight foods that you can eat.
that most people think are unhealthy, but they're actually healthy. Again, moderation is the key. Balance is the key. That's the same with all fitness, if we're being completely honest, is finding what works for you and then staying in the moderation balance lane. And when you do that and your diet's on point and your training's on point, you will see some progress. How much progress, again, is going to be specific to you. I know that sucks, but that's the deal. My name is Simon Miller. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, like the video, share the video, should you so wish. Go stick it on Reddit. Somebody get mad at me. They always do. Yeah, also have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. There's a link in the description below. Nobody makes any money off YouTube unless you're doing hundreds of thousands of views, maybe one day. But until then, I need support there. And I see you when I see you.